Andre villas Bosch. remember him? He came storming onto the European football scene, seemingly out of nowhere, for those outside of Portugal at least. He was that young manager at a top club, Chelsea, before young managers regularly got jobs at top clubs. But after a couple of failed stints in England, he went east to Russia, and following that, even further east to China. But now he's back. He's back in one of Europe's top five leagues, tasked with the job of taking Marseille to the well, I guess best of the rest in France behind PSG, but where was he for the last two years? And before that, how exactly did villas Boas, at just 16 years of age, get the attention of legendary manager Sir Bobby Robson? In this video, we'll look at what makes villas Boas such a unique individual in the football world. Not so much about his career now, but more on his background, why he was so important to Mourinho's early success, and his unorthodox climb to coaching at Porto before he had even turned 20. Hey, I'm Adrian, by the way, late introductions, and welcome to Ravon TV and another installment of Remember Them, a series that's super, super infrequent because of all the other content we produce on here. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you find yourself enjoying the content during this video, then consider subscribing for more and join our growing community. Sound good? All right, guys, let's get into it, going way back to the late 70s. On the 17th of October 1977 in Porto, Portugal, a boy with an extremely long name was born. Luiz André da Pina Cabral e Village Boas. He was born into an upper middle class family. His father, who has an even longer name as you can see, is a chemical engineer and professor, and his mother, an entrepreneur with a few clothing stores around Porto. His great grandfather was the first Viscount of Guilhomil. A Viscount, by the way, is basically just a nobleman, a person who comes from a noble, well to do family that's the layman definition from Adrian, by the way, but it probably won't get you very good marks on your English test. His grandfather married an English woman from Manchester, hence why André spoke such perfect English upon arriving in England. He grew up well-educated, attending Colegio de Rosario, though according to the PE teacher who worked at the college while André was there, he told the independent that, quote, he was a polite, affable student, but while he was bright, he did not study that hard because what really fascinated him was football. Speaking of football, André had been obsessed at a young age, with his father registering him as a FC Porto socio or club member when he was just three years old. But unfortunately for him, his playing career was much shorter than his name. He started as a goalkeeper for a local club before moving to Ramaldens and getting some playing time as a defensive midfielder. By the time he was 18, given his obsession with football and some key self-awareness, André knew he wasn't good enough to go pro, and so his focus shifted towards coaching. What helped with that realization and the push towards coaching? When André was just 16, his family had recently moved into a new apartment building, the very same building that FC Porto's manager had moved into with his wife. That manager was none other than Sir Bobby Robson, the now legendary English manager who helped José Mourinho find his way in the football world. As a massive Porto fan, André was annoyed with Robson, so when he eventually saw him in the hall of their shared apartment block, he grilled him, asking him why he wouldn't start Porto striker Domingos Paciencia, and allegedly, according to the independent writer Duncan White, Robson was so impressed with André's passion and knowledge for the game at such a young age that he asked him to write a report for him and to leave it in his mailbox. And I mean, this was nothing new for André, writing reports on football in general and Porto in particular was a pastime of his. Remember his old PE teacher I mentioned? Well, he said, quote, I remember for one school project, he handed in an exhaustive report on Porto and their tactics and substitutions, with lots of statistics. Well, he must have hit it out of the park with his first report for Robson, as the Porto manager asked him to continue writing to him, and in return, he started taking the 16-year-old with him down to Porto training, and eventually had him instated as a youth coach for the club. But he didn't stop there. Just one year later, in 1995, Robson had the then 17-year-old Village Boas sent to Lilshall in England, which was where the Football Association School of Excellence was located. Quote, he liked my passion, so he helped me to enroll at Lillishall to take my FA coaching qualifications. I started very young in Lillishall. In fact, I shouldn't really have been there because the law doesn't allow a minor to take qualifications. But Bobby Robson smoothed the way with Mr. Charles Hughes, the former head of coaching at the Center of Excellence. And I was allowed in to take my UEFA C badges. 
Later, he went on yet another UK trip, this time going to the Inverclyde National Sports Centre in Largs, Scotland. This was where villas Boas got his B, A and professional coaching licenses and impressed the staff with how studious and professional he was at such a young age. So studious and professional, in fact, that by the time he was 25, he was a fully qualified coach. But that's jumping a little bit ahead. In the year 2000, villas Boas had taken on the job of technical director slash coach of the British Virgin Islands. He started by coaching the youth teams, then moved up, providing the football association with tactics and training plans for each age group in order to develop them better. After just a year and a half in this role, however, he returned to Porto to coach the under-19 team until 2002 when José Mourinho took the senior team head coach role and he had something different in mind for Villas Boas. He wanted him to be his spy, or as Mourinho would later put it, his eyes and ears. First off, how did Mourinho even know who this young coach was at Porto? From Mourinho's time as Sir Bobby Robson's assistant and interpreter, they were around the Englishman at the same time. Villas Boas was basically the head of Intel for Mourinho, or his chief strategist, as he would go to opposing teams' matches and training to report back to Mourinho with his findings, Bielsa style. Here's Villas Boas himself explaining it. My work enables Jazat to know exactly when a player from the opposition team is likely to be at his best or his weakest. I will travel to the training grounds, often incognito, and then look at our opponent's mental and physical state before drawing my conclusions and presenting a full dossier to Jazat. This man was head of espionage. So he helped Mourinho to go on to a Portuguese league title, winning the league 11 points clear of Benfica, as well as the Taça de Portugal and the UEFA Cup, where they defeated Celtic in the final. The next season, Porto were just as dominant, winning the league with five weeks still to play. Benfica did beat them in the Taça de Portugal, <laughs> but Porto only went ahead and won the Champions League that year. Mourinho, with his staff, including the spy, Villas Boas, <laughs> of course that wasn't his title. His real title, in case you wanted to know, was assistant scout, and not scout as in to identify talent for potential signings, of course, tactical scout. I personally like just referring to him as spy, but that's just me. So Mourinho, his staff, and his spy took off to London. At Chelsea, Villas Boas still had the same role as before. Side note, he was also just a year older than Frank Lampard and three years older than John Terry, as Villas Boas was just 26 in August of 2004. From here, you know the story pretty well. Mourinho had Chelsea playing some lovely football and presided over two league and league cup doubles and an FA Cup. When Mourinho left for Milan, Villas Boas did as well, but not as Mourinho's assistant as he had wanted. He wanted more opportunity and unfortunately for Mourinho, that opportunity came for Villas Boas elsewhere. After the 2008-09 season, Villas Boas received a call from Portugal. In the 2009-10 season, Académica de Coimbra, a storied club, was struggling with the possibility of relegation. They decided that the man to save them was Villas Boas, and yes, at just 32 years of age, he was younger than some of the players on the team. Villas Boas arrived in October with the team floundering in last place without a win to their name just yet. Appointing this former Mourinho spy scout, we'll call him that, a happy medium between spy and scout, <laughs> was of course a risk, right? Luis Agostinho, the Academica technical director at the time? It was a risk, but a calculated risk. He was a strong leader who had an excellent training methodology. And that translated to lifting Coimbra up to mid-table from the bowels of the league, all the way to a League Cup semi-final, where he was beaten by a late goal by his next club, FC Porto. That's right, after a year with Coimbra, he was back to his old stomping grounds, but this time in the role that he had coveted for so long. Now here's where things both took a turn for the best and the worst for Villas Boas. Yes, he had a ton of experience at the top level, but not as a manager. After guiding Academica to mid-table safety, he was now in charge of a Porto team that boasted one of the best, most dominant squads in their history. And remember, he didn't quite have a full season at Academica. He came in October. This team went on to steamroll the league, winning it by 21 points and not losing a single match. They only dropped points three times. Draws against Sporting, Vitoria Guimarães, and Passos de Ferreira. They won the Taça de Portugal and they won the Europa League. Why? Not to take away from Villas Boas at all. Clearly he had a lot of tactical acumen, but just look at this squad. 
Here's their lineup from the 2011 Europa League final. Hulk, in close to his prime. Radamel Falcao, who scored 39 goals. Avarela, who was featuring for Portugal regularly. Freddy Guarín, who went on to Inter and played for Colombia at World Cups. João Moutinho, who you undoubtedly know. Fernando, who later went on to Manchester City. Otamendi, same fate. Alvaro Pereira, regular for Uruguay. And on the bench, they have the likes of Maicon and, oh, I don't know, James Rodriguez. It kills me to say it, but they had far and away the best team in Portugal. It would have been a feat if he was incapable of winning the league. Genuinely impressive if he didn't win the league, but they did. And they smashed it and grabbed a couple of other cups to boot, making Vilas Boas the youngest manager to win the Europa League. And he should have stuck around to prove that he could do it again and again with this Porto side, despite them losing some players. But. Like so much talent in this sport, especially from Portugal it seems, they are plucked away too soon, and Chelsea came calling, and they ponied up the 15 million euros to transfer Vilas Boas from Porto and make him, at the time, the most expensive manager ever. Things didn't work out there, just as they didn't work out at Tottenham. Sure, he found success in Russia and won a few trophies, then went to China, only to leave on embarrassing terms, but like I said at the beginning, his current career isn't the point of this video. Now that he's back in the top five leagues with an historic club that is doing well again under his watch, I hope that this video helps you to understand just how this fresh-faced Portuguese redhead with a knack for English ended up managing at Chelsea in the first place and how unique his story is in football. He was the original high-profile young manager of the modern era who never quite hit the heights expected of him. But while he has a great footballing brain, Maybe those heights were a little too high to begin with following that single season of success with that Porto super team. From saving Academica from relegation in 2010, to winning the Europa League in 2011, and then to Chelsea in that same year, there were no small steps for Vilas Boas. Thanks for choosing to spend your valuable time watching this video. I'm Adrian, and take care.